wanted to share today is something I've seen happen with believers. And on the heels of talking about discernment and seed, which, by the way, the Bible is clear to point out the seed is the word of God. And I'm in 2 John 8 for starters today. And it says, look to yourselves. So, folks, once you've accepted the Lord and salvation is now a part of your life, it's up to you to continue in the faith. It's up to you to seek ye first the kingdom of God. You have a responsibility. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that bids him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. And where I've seen many Christians fall is they begin in the spirit, they get hold of the truth, but they don't continue in it. And as time goes along, they latch on to another doctrine. They exchange the truth for a lie, which is the title of today's message, is the word exchange. Now, over the years, I've heard so much controversy about, well, once saved, always saved. It's a free gift. You can't lose it. The fact of the matter is, it is a free gift. But the problem is many people are going back to the service counter and exchanging the truth for a lie. They're not continuing in the doctrine of Christ. <clears throat> the doctrine of Christ is a selfless doctrine. It talks about taking up your cross. It, it means that you have to look beyond yourself to the needs of others. You have to die to self. Let me give you an example here. Matthew 16. And I'm in verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me. The Bible talks a lot about if you continue in the faith. Uh, you can get into John 15, 5. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. If you, if you, if you, if. The ball's in your court. Once you've accepted salvation, now you have to look to yourself. Now you have to look to yourself and say, okay, am I going to make this a lifestyle? Or is this just some uh, Sunday morning uh, gathering and it's kind of a fun place? And um, But verse 24, then said Jesus unto the disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. You have a cross just like our Lord did. And our Lord, he died on a, on a cross. But there's a spiritual cross. The, cross. the Bible talks about the cross of Christ, the gospel of Christ, and what we're talking about, the doctrine of Christ. And you see that it means in order to live, you have to die. This is where many draw the line. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And this is what separates reality. This is reality check. This separates the men from the boys, so to speak, the grown-ups from the children. Well, I want this. I want that. I don't want. I don't want to do that. I don't want. To, well, okay, then. Have a nice life, but someday you'll have to give account of it. For what is it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And this is what many people, many. That's why the Bible says many are called, few are chosen. Many have exchanged the truth. Many have exchanged the doctrine of Christ for a lie. They want an easier path. There's not an easier path, not home at least. There's a, there's a lot of easier paths out there, but they're not going to get you to your destination. Oh, they're going to be fun. They're going to sound good and look good. But in the end, it's not going to get through the Lord's radar. That's why we talk about you have to abide in the doctrine of Christ. And then you have to be watchful and not bid God speak to any other doctrine that's not of Christ. You know, the enemy is described as a serpent. You see it in the beginning of Genesis. You see it all the way at the end of Revelation. Now, I know we, we saw many pictures we, of, of a snake slithering. 
but there wasn't a, a real snake, so to speak. It, the serpent is a sly, cunning being, and that same serpent that was in the in 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 the beginning is also in the end. But you have to know how to rightly divide. You have to discern between what is of God and what is of that serpent, as described as the serpent or the old devil. Now, a lot of people, and that's why Revelation 20, 11 talks about the book. My Bible is the book of life. I have, this is the copy of the book of life. The Lord has the original copy with the names of his people written in it. You want to make sure on a daily basis, your name is still written in the book of life. Because when he opens up that book of life, you have to be in that. What happens is he turns around and he goes and it says in Revelation 20, 11 through 15, that he goes off and he opens the other books. And the other books are man's books because they're judged according to their works, to their doctrines and not the doctrines of Christ. These are things that man's exchanged. The cheap imitation, knockoff imitations, and he starts reading them off. And I mean, you can go down the line, just like if you open the phone book today and look for in the churches, so-called churches. You see this doctrine, that doctor, this uh, denomination, or that denomination. <laughs> Ugh. What happened to one Lord, one faith? Everything in the Lord's realm is one. The Bible says the sower sows the word, Mark 4, 14, the sower. If you'll notice in the Lord's realm, when you see the word the, it's singular. The Lord said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The sower sows the word. Uh, John 4.37 says, one soweth. One. The other day I watched a program and they talked about, well, we're looking for all these sowers. Yeah, well, they were looking for people to sow money. Well, so what? Where's that going to get you? The sower sows the word. The Lord's, I'm here and my goal is to let the Lord speak to me to help sow that word and get it sown in the heart. And then you have to keep it there and not let the enemy, you know, because the enemy can't move you physically out of his kingdom, out of the Lord's realm. But what he'll do is, you know, like, a, like the serpent, he'll slither in there. And then if you're not watching, quick little bite and like a poison, it slowly breaks down the body. He gets a doctrine in there that slowly breaks down and you start believing the lie more than truth because you're listening more to the lie than the truth. And the Lord talked about in his word that he came in his own name and they wouldn't receive him. But if another comes in his name, in his own name, him will receive because they're worshiping and serving the creature. And let's get into that. Romans 1. So what you have out there is an exchange program. People are exchanging the truth for a lie. And in Romans 1.20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, which is us. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Mankind is without excuse. God's poured our spirit upon all flesh. He's made this available to all people. Now, you may say, well, I don't see that many Christians. Well, they haven't made it a lifestyle. They haven't made it a priority. They'd rather go live their own life. They've got other priorities. And I see that with a lot of so-called believers. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of an incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who exchanged the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. We do that a lot of times with our own desires. We worship the creature. We want to live and, and satisfy our own desires instead of abiding in the will of God. The Bible is very specific to tell you, whosoever shall do the will of God shall abide forever. There's that word abide again. Continuing. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away. It tells you that in Colossians 1.23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and not being moved away. You can be moved away. 
because many exchange the truth for a lie. They look for an easier path. I walked into a believer's home one time and there's a book, another testament of Jesus Christ. <laughs> another testament. Apparently he didn't do a good job with what he said. And the Bible is very specific to tell you that I come in the volume of a book, a book. Uh, Psalm 40 verse 7 tells you that. Hebrews 10 7. Lo, I come in the volume of a book, the book of life. There's not books of life. So mankind decided to add unto, which in Revelation 22, 19, the Lord said, well, if you add on to, to my words, I'm going to add on, I'm going to add these plagues unto you. And if you take away from my word, I'm going to take you away as well and remove you from my book of life. Revelation 3, 5 says the same thing. If you do what he asks you to do, he will not blot your name out of the book of life. Well, he can't blot your name out of something unless it was there in the first place. Timothy talked about some shall depart from the faith. You can't depart from something unless you were actually there. What happens? They exchange the truth for a lie. And that doesn't work, people. That's why you have to, once that sower, that seed is the word of God, gets in there, you have to write, you have to study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word, what is of God and what is man. So I don't let something sneak in under the radar and, and accept one of man's deep doctrines, cheap knockoff doctrines. And that's one of the tr biggest tricks of the devil as you go along. If you don't abide in the doctrine of Christ. Jeremiah 2. And I mean, this has been going on for a long time, folks. It started in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve had it made. The Lord said, gave them simple instruction. Here, I'm going to put you in this garden. Tend to the garden. There's a tree of life here. There's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Just leave that tree of knowledge of good and evil alone and work here. Well, it doesn't say how long the devil worked on him. But eventually, he found a way to get in there and get them to exchange the truth for a lie. And the rest is history. We've seen the fall of mankind after that. And then the Lord had to come and pay a perfect sacrifice to restore that fellowship back again. And it's the same. There's nothing new under the sun. He said, now you have a choice today. You have the knowledge. You have the opportunity to partake of the tree of life, which is Christ, his word. Or you can go grab a cheap knockoff imitation, which the devil has plenty of them out there. And he's found plenty of ways to get through to mankind, to get them to, uh, to bite, so to speak. So in Jeremiah 2, 11, and, and this is a scathing rebuke of, of God's people. Hath a nation changed or exchanged their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have exchanged their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O you heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. The doctrines of man do not, are not able to hold living water. There's holes in the doctrine. So it's like going down, you know, to the well, and you, you take your cistern, and you load it up with water, and by the time you get back to the house, it's all ran out. That's what happens with man's doctor. That's what happens when you exchange the truth for the lie. So you get home and you're thirsty and you've got nothing to drink. That's what man's doctrines do. There's holes in them. They don't work. They were never intended to work. There's an exchange program going on, folks. And the devil's going to come at you with cheap imitation, cheap doctrines, knockoff doctrines. And that's why the Bible is so specific. And that's why we teach the doctrine of Christ. And what it takes to abide in. And you have to die in order to live. It's not the most pleasant doctrine. It's not a fan favorite. But it's the only one that will get you home. Psalm 106. We go back a little ways here. And this is a kind of an overview of the wilderness experience with the children of Israel. And I'm at verse 19. And they made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they exchanged their glory into the similitude of an ox that eats grass. 
they forgot God their Savior, which had done great things, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. They forgot God. They did not renew their mind daily. They did not abide in his will. And we see, and if you go back and read the Old Testament account of children of Israel, many perished. In fact, at the end, there was only two that made it to the promised land of that younger generation or that older generation, excuse me. The older generation had to die off so that the new man could enter the promised land. Sound familiar? Yeah, the, the old has to die in order for the new, and then the new generation was able to enter in to the promised land. And that same doctrine holds true today. So truth, church, well, truth, the only true church are those that are abiding in truth. If you continue my word, you shall be my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Are you set free? First Timothy 2.4 talks about who would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I've seen a lot of people get saved, but they don't come to a knowledge of the truth. They don't continue in it. They do what people tell them. They abide in a doctrine that men has thrown out there. So be on the lookout, wake up, rightly divide the word of truth, establish a relationship with the Lord so you don't get duped or exchange the truth for light. Sometimes unknowingly, unwittingly, because you've fallen asleep and not paid attention. God bless church, stay alert.